Hey, what's up guys? It's great to see you all again. And if you're new here, I'm Patrick, and this is where I ramble about tech and other stuff. If you've been to this channel before, you know how much I love my iPad Pro, and you may also know I'm a big productivity geek. Combine those two and you've got yourself a list of awesome productivity apps for the iPad. Make sure to stick around till the end. We have some really interesting ones today. Let's ramble. Hold up, things go well when I pull up. They all on me like a one thing. So in my quest for the perfect productivity app setup, the apps I use often change. Some apps are always there and some make a comeback after I realized they were in fact better than all of their successors. The apps I'll show you today are the ones I'm using right now on a daily basis. If you're into apps videos and you like to switch it up every now and then, I do these apps updates from time to time. So if you want to subscribe to the channel, the button is right there on the opposite side of the like button. All right, so let's get into it. The first app I'll mention is the first app I open up in the morning and that is currently Notion. Now, for the longest time, I've resisted trying Notion because I was and still am a very avid Evernote user. I'm still using Evernote on a daily basis, but I found a way for them to coexist in peace. So usually I'll open my Notion on my Mac at my main desk because that's where I start my workday. But as soon as I start moving around, I'll be using the iPad version, which integrates and syncs seamlessly. What I've really come to appreciate about Notion is how customizable it is. You can organize this app entirely as you want and tweak every little detail. Maybe that's why I avoided it for so long because it's a bit of work to get organized and it's definitely not plug and play. But I realized that this is exactly where the magic is because rather than hopping between apps to get what I want, I can organize my Notion so that it has what I want. I chose to keep it very simple because to me, that is what being productive is all about minimizing the steps you need to take to accomplish something, or as I phrase it on my dashboard to get shit done. Everything I need quick and easy access to is on my dashboard. So I created this to-do list, which has my action items. Then I created a couple of drop-down menus, which show me how urgent the task is and what it is in reference to like YouTube or business or personal. I've also set it up so that the task disappears as soon as I check them off as done. I can open up each task, which then opens a page in itself where I can add a whole bunch of stuff. This is particularly useful when a task consists of a number of smaller to-dos or I need to store some relevant files that relate to the task without having to flood my dashboard with a million tiny tasks. Neat and organized. Then on the right side of my dashboard, I have a YouTube page and a projects page. Projects relating to my daytime business and YouTube, obviously to all things YouTube. Below the to-do list, I have some things that I just need to remind myself of. These things will obviously change often. And lastly, you'll see a section called My Links. And this is where everything I send to Notion from external apps is collected for me to review and organize if needed. And that brings me to our next app, which is called Just Press Record. Now this app has been around for some time, but I recently discovered it because I bought an Apple Watch and I was exploring how to utilize that in my productivity setup. And let me tell you, this app is a game changer for me. For my daytime business, I'm constantly on the move and I often have ideas or I'm reminded of something when I don't have access to a computer or even my iPad or my iPhone. Just press record does two things. It gives you a big red button so you can immediately start recording your ideas as voice notes and it transcribes them almost flawlessly. So you don't need to type them up later. I created a widget on my watch face for easy access and once I'm done recording, it'll sync with my iPhone, my Mac, and of course my iPad. I'll send all of my recordings, including transcriptions to Notion. So now every time I open up my iPad and I go into Notion, it's daily practice that I go through my links and be reminded of all of my voice notes. I send it into Notion because that's currently my control center for everything. But you can of course send your notes to whatever app makes sense to you. This way, it's really hard to forget anything as I always have access to at least my watch and I can organize it all on my iPad later. Really, really useful. It's not free, but it's more than worth the couple of bucks it costs in the App Store. The next app is the last part of my morning routine and that is Carrot Weather. Again, stumbled upon it because I was looking for a good weather app for my Apple Watch and I was amazed by how much information it offers and how accurate it is. But I really fell in love with it when I installed the companion app on my iPad. Why? Because this app is hilarious and it has a bit of a foul mouth. When you first install it, it will ask you the level of intensity you like, and you can switch on or off profanity and politics as they're basically the same thing. The results are hilarious. 
Again, not a free app, but totally worth a couple of bucks. Now, before I actually start working on any of my tasks, I do one of the most important things for an entrepreneur, and that is to determine whether I need to do a task myself or I'm better off outsourcing it. And that goes both for my daytime business and YouTube. Do I need to spend my time on a task or is it better to delegate it to someone else so I can focus on something more important or something that requires my personal attention? For all of my video work, I use Fiverr. For example, I'm working on a productivity course for Skillshare right now and I needed an explainer video in one of the chapters. I could spend my time learning how to create animated explainer videos, but I decided to outsource this part of my video to somebody that already knows how to do a kick-ass explainer video. This way, I'm able to record at least two more chapters of my course while somebody else is worrying about an explainer video. Fiverr is really great because you can find someone to do basically anything, and it's surprisingly cheap. There's links to everything in the video description if you want to check any of these apps out for yourself. Right, so now I have established what I need to do today and which tasks I need to do myself. The first thing I try to do before starting a task is get rid of any kind of distraction. And that's where Focus Keeper comes in. I have the attention span of a squirrel and I'm often tempted to check my emails or messages as they come in, which is of course a productivity killer. I practically need to force myself to do one thing at a time. A very well-known technique for this is called the Pomodoro Technique, which is based on a simple kitchen timer in the shape of a tomato. Pomodoro is the Italian word for tomato. The system is simple. I set a timer in Focus Keeper of 25 minutes, because that is generally accepted as the ideal length to efficiently focus on a single task. These 25-minute blocks are called rounds, and after every round, you give yourself a 5-minute break. After every 4 rounds, you take a longer break. I have it set to 25 minutes. So I take a break of one round every four rounds. The daily goal is set to 12 rounds, which means 12 blocks of 25 minutes of uninterrupted work. Now that's less than six hours a day, but this is quality work time. And believe me, you will get more done in three hours with this style of working than you would normally do all day. Once you commit to the rounds and you don't let yourself drift away from your task, I guarantee you, you will be significantly more efficient and productive. All right, to do actual work, I like to use Microsoft Office. Call me old school or just old. Normally, I wouldn't mention any of the apps like Word or Excel in a video like this. I mean, if you don't know those apps, you may have been living under a rock. But Microsoft recently released the Microsoft Office app for the iPad. The app was available before, but it was basically just a blown up version of the iPhone app. This new app is a proper dedicated iPad app. So on the Home tab, that's where all of your recent documents live, as well as the documents that have been shared with you. I created a separate account to show you guys the app. My personal one has a lot of client documents in there, so I have to respect the confidentiality. So we're just working with a blank slate here. Anyway, this Home section is useful because it has all of your docs, whether it's Word, PowerPoint, or Excel, they're all gonna be there. On the bottom, we have the files folder, which has every file you own on any of the connected storage accounts. So you can use Microsoft OneDrive, but personally, I prefer Dropbox. Most of my clients use it, it makes sense. But that's just a matter of preference. The real magic in this app happens in the actions part. There are some really nifty features in there, some real time savers. You can sign PDFs so you don't have to print a document. You can just sign it with your Apple Pencil and send it back. We have Scan to PDF, which converts images to PDF. Of course, you can convert documents to PDF. But what's really super useful is PDF to Word. That's right, with a single tap, you can convert a PDF file into a Word document and edit whatever you want. There are other tools for editing PDF documents without converting them. We'll talk about one of those later in the video. But having all of this functionality in one place is very efficient. The last feature I want to mention is another killer feature, and that is image to text, which means you can take either an existing image or snap a new one, and the app will convert all the text in the picture into an editable document. Same goes for image to table, which converts tables in an image into a proper Excel table. Really useful stuff. I mentioned a dedicated PDF editor before, and my favorite for some time now has been PDF Expert. I don't want to spend a lot of time on this app today because I've talked about it in previous videos. It's just a very powerful tool for editing PDFs directly, sign documents, you can read, you can annotate. It just does it all and it does it very, very well. It's not cheap, 
but this is one of those apps where you get what you pay for. It just works. Next is a very useful application for the iPad, and that is Yoink. Now, I would have downloaded it just because of the name, Yoink. I mean, come on, that's just fun to say. But the app is actually extremely useful. The best way to describe Yoink is probably a virtual shelf. It's like a clipboard on steroids, which lets you see what you actually clipped. And this can be anything, like a picture from a website. Just drag it into Yoink and then into whatever app you want. You could sync it to the companion app on your Mac. I don't really use that. I mostly just airdrop my files over and on the Mac itself, it's easy enough to drag and drop things between windows but not so much on the iPad. Multitasking is still a bit of a chore and Yoink really helps by eliminating some of the steps when you're trying to move stuff around. Talking about moving stuff between apps, another staple in my daily workflow is Drafts. Drafts is my go-to place if I need to write something down really quick, but I don't yet know what to do with it. It's like a scrap piece of paper. Once I revisit my scribbles, I can send them anywhere, directly from the app. I can even tweet what I just wrote by simply sending it to Twitter straight from the app. I like that it has a widget and the widget is just as simple as the app itself. It's a giant plus sign. And once you tap it, you can start writing. Zero steps in between. I like to finish my day with a bit of journaling. It's always a good idea to build a little evaluation moment into your day and journaling is an easy way to do that. It doesn't have to be much, just a few lines. I've been trying several apps and I recently landed on day one. What I like about this app is that it takes little snippets out of my day, like pictures I took or that were sent to me, places I visited and calendar events. Of course, you can turn all of that on or off. I quite like the bells and whistles because it gives me a pretty complete snapshot of my day. On the calendar pane, it is really easy to see when I journaled and when I didn't. And you can click on any day to see what was going on then. If you're like me and you have a memory like a Swiss cheese, this app can be a very useful resource. All right, guys, I hope this video was useful to you. If it was, please give it a thumbs up. That actually does really help my channel. And if you like my content and you haven't already, a sub to the channel would be awesome. Thank you so much for watching and see you in the next one.